Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Uh, in this one, I'm going to do a sound crossfade. Show you how to crossfade two looping sounds. It's a really smooth way to do it. It um, does. It is kind of complex, but it uh, is real clean, and you can change the time in which it takes to uh, fade. Okay, so right now, I'm going to turn off. First, we're going to turn off the background music. Okay. All right. So now we have the delta sound which is kind of the crickets and stuff and then the space drone so what we need to do first is set up the volumes so first we're gonna put in I haven't done this in a while so maybe tweaked okay so first we're gonna put in a variable data source for both volumes now I'm gonna make it 200 because that's the max volume that you can go with these volumes and then if later if you need to make something a little less then I'll show you how to use a two input operator to take it down. All right, so 200. All right, we'll copy this, bring it over here to this sound. Okay, now, delta volume. Set the volume to, the, to that. And we'll set the volume to this. Okay, so for now though, we're gonna make this one zero. So that just ha has the delta sound. All right, so next what you need is an interval trigger for each one. So we're gonna put an interval trigger here, interval trigger here. Okay, next you need state events. You need an on and off state event for each one. on and off copy these for these two okay so now off go with the impulse make this one on actually we're gonna leave this one off and make the other one on make the top on because I think it's it's a little straighter to do that on and off okay and now let's do the same for these on and off. Okay, next what we need is a generic filter. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell us when the sound equals 200. So we're going to put one here and one here. Okay, so now we hook this up to first comparison value is going to be the volume. Second comparison value is going to be 200. we want it to be greater than. So do the same for this one. Greater than, first comparison value is this volume, second one is 200. Okay, now next what we need is set value events. So we're gonna have one, we're gonna have a few actually. One's gonna be increase by one. Now this is what you can change to change the speed. Sorry. And we need to select the event target to be the volume. Okay, so now this one is going to be decrease by one. We're going to copy these, bring them over here, and we're going to uh, make them connect to these uh, this other volume sorry sidetracked with messages all right now okay so then what we need to do is we need to have two operators here I'm sorry, two set values here. One set value would be set. We want to set it to 200 exactly. These are kind of hard to get because they get going so fast you can't slow down. All right, the event target's right. 
and this one's going to be set to zero. I'm sorry, we do need to disconnect these from over here. So we're going to just delete these two, take these two, bring them over here, and reset their values to this one. Okay, now, what we do is we, we will turn on the impulse. Impulse will be every tick, and it'll go to the generic filter. Do the same with this one. And go to the filter. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to test to see, it's going to look at this filter and it's going to say, is this volume over 200? And if it is, then we want to turn this off. If it isn't, then we want to increase it. And what we also want to do is we want to decrease this one. When they're increasing one, we want to decrease one. Same for this. If this volume is greater than 200, if it's true, then we turn off the interval. If it's false, then we want to increase that number until it is, and we want to decrease the other number. Sorry. These are supposed to be set. Set. And then this increase is supposed to decrease, so it goes here. Sorry about that. See, I said it gets kind of complex. Okay, so no. After we have finished doing everything, which is we'll turn this off, then what we want to do is make sure everything's done. So we will set this one to 200. Because if it is greater than 200, then we want to set it to 200 and stop. And then we want to make this one, make sure that this one is set to zero. So we set that to zero. Now with this one, if it is true, then we want to make sure so we set this one to 200 and then we want to set the other one to zero just to make absolute sure that the numbers are dead on because sometimes if you're counting up and the filter gets it it may go one tick over and add whatever your variable is that you're adding it'll add it to it so okay so now we need a couple of hit triggers we're going to need to do a couple of things too okay so these area triggers sorry not hit triggers area triggers i like using rectangles it's kind of tall, so if people sky over it, they won't uh, miss it. This is going to turn this one on. Set it down on the drive line. Copy this one over. Put it. Oh, we'll put it about here. Eh, eh. Okay, put it here, so you can see what's going on. And then it hit. It's hit. It's going to be on that state event to turn that interval on. Now, what we need to do is we need to turn these intervals off, disable, and reset when enabled. Now, with these area triggers, we need to select, deselect, disable after hit, because you're going to want to use them again. Now, I use this for a secret area. You drive into a secret area, and it'll change the sound, switch it to a different sound. When you come out of it, it switches it back. So let's test this out and see if this works. Okay, so we have the delta. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's enable the icon so we can see. Okay, that turns on the delta so that will do nothing. This should turn on the space drone. Fades it in nicely. I'm going to go back to the delta. Let's hit that one. Fades back to the delta. So this is working like we want it. You can play around with the numbers. Like I said, to uh, you can just keep doing this. It just keeps fading back and forth. It'll test if you hit it twice. It just tests to see if it's 200. If it's not, then it will be. It fades back to the delta. All right, so that's working like we wanted to. Now let me show you how to use a two-input operator for, say, another sound. Say you have another looping sound. So let's add one more looping sound in. Let's say you have um, okay. So let's add in this forest. 
So your forest is here, but say you only want the forest at 100 and you want the delta at 200 in volume or whatever if you want a 150 or whatever. So what you do is you grab the two input operator, bring it here. This first operand will be the original variable for the sound. Second operand can be 100 if I can get it to 100. And then what we're going to do is subtract it from that one. So what it will do, it will go to negative number, and you could put in a, a filter to prevent that, but I don't really think it's necessary. I think they probably be programmed in, so it won't do that. But So what it does is it's taking that variable and it subtracts 100 from it. So it's equal to 100. So now you force sound set your volume to that operator there. Okay, so now the forest is only 100, but the delta is 200. So, and it will switch as it needs to. So we switch to the drone sound. Okay, now when you switch back, and you see it takes the volume, you can barely see it, 100 up there for the forest. The delta is still 200. So, all right. So that's how you do it. You can use different sounds if you want. You could go a third, put in a third sound if you want. Might get a little complex bouncing between the three. But so uh, this is how you do it. Hope you had a good time, and thanks for watching.